Hey guys, welcome back to Chickadee Farm. Today we are in the kitchen making a fun meal and I thought I would bring you along with me. So a couple of years ago now, well I guess actually just since we have been here in Idaho, um, David went looking for some Idaho localish farms and he found the Snake River, Snake River Meats I think it's called, I'll have to look it up. Um, but they are a local farm and um, they do beef and pork, I believe. Definitely pork, because that's what we're doing today. So he had gotten a rather large, I think it is eight pounds, um, pork butt, and it's just been in our freezer for a couple months now. And he decided, you know what? This is the weekend, he's gonna smoke it, and we are going to have Cubanos for dinner. Mom is gonna come over and have dinner with us, so I thought I'd make it a little more special. So we are also going to make the buns for the Cubanos. So I'm gonna walk you through that now. And also some lemon bars with a bunch of lemons that really need to get used up. But first I want to get my, um, what is this called, Instapot going with some eggs because I have a ridiculous number of eggs right now that need to be used up and um, get some hard boiled eggs going because I also thought we could have some deviled eggs with dinner as well. So I do a pretty good job of keeping track of which are the oldest. So these are the ones I keep in the fridge and then this two dozen here is my oldest batch. So I'm actually gonna wash these up because I don't wash them before I put them in the fridge or leave them on the counter and uh, they, we will get them started in here. So I'm just gonna put a cup and a half of water or so in the bottom here and we are going to do a dozen eggs. And I love this method. It is super easy. I don't know where I found it, somewhere online. Uh, you just cook them on high pressure cook them on high for five minutes, let them, the pressure release for five minutes, and then put them in an ice water bath for five minutes. And they're done perfectly every single time. So I just love it. Okay, let's get this guy plugged in here and going. Then I also washed up a few more for our lemon bars, which lovely enough take six eggs. And I believe that our bread takes eggs as well. So I'm just gonna set those over here, and then we're going to do the switcheroo with all of the eggs to move them up into their new homes. <laughs> Along with all of these eggs here, this one isn't quite full yet, but super close. I have six more eggs from yesterday. Haven't even checked eggs for today. I'm sure I'll have at least five, if not six, or sometimes eight, because my little olive acre, she is prolific. Holy cow. Anyway, so all I do is take my oldest eggs and put them in the fridge. And I am, like I said, I'm pretty good about keeping track of where we are. And then I just move everything up in these cartons. This may seem silly to do this, <laughs> but I don't know. I just, I don't want to waste eggs. And um, this is just the best way to keep track of anything that might need to get used sooner than later. Look at these little blue ones, just so pretty. Oh, love them. My new little girl. And at the oldest end, yes. All right. Nope, that's not where they go. <laughs> there we go. All right, now these will all stay on the counter. And goodness gracious, I thought I would have gotten rid of more of them, but no, I still have a ton. Before we get started on the rest of the stuff here, David has put the pork on the smoker. So I thought I, we would take a quick look at that. So you, um, I actually, we're going to go back right now and I will show you uh, how he made the 
marinade for it uh, because it's a, I think it's called adobo. Ugh, sorry, I'm going to have to look it up. Anyway, I will let you know what it is when I, as you're watching this little next clip. You might notice that these are not my hands. This is actually Dave's specialty. So I, and since he does not like to be in front of the camera, I'm actually lucky that he let me record this at all. So I will be doing a voiceover as he makes this marinade. It is a Cuban mojo marinade from chilipeppermadness.com. We have used it several times and just love it. So he's just starting with some olive oil and fresh squeezed orange juice. Next come all of the herbs. There are quite a few of them. And this is fresh cilantro that he is adding. Pretty much an entire bunch of it. So there is also the absolute recipe follower, so he measures all things, even though I would just throw the whole bunch into the blender regardless of how much it was. Next, we are adding a good amount of mint as well. The nice thing is, since it's all going into a blender, it doesn't have to be chopped fine and just removed from the thick stems. And this is some oregano. Again, just removing it from the stems. Now, I'm surprised that he, he doesn't actually measure this one. And then this recipe actually calls for sour orange juice, which is not something that we can get here at all. So the substitution is to put in lemon and lime juice to add that sourness. And then a good amount of the orange peel as well. Unfortunately, you can't see this part really well, but he is adding a couple of uh, teaspoons of salt, garlic. These are just bar garlic puffs from our garlic last year in the garden. It's frozen. Makes it nice and easy to add when you have to add a whole lot of garlic to something. Now, just off the blender, you get all one together. This is a beautiful pork butt. Like I said, it is it's just a little over eight pounds, but he does want to trim off some of the fat cap because there's just a little too much. Don't need quite all of it. And then it's going to go back, and then the marinade is added to it, massaged in a bit, and put into the refrigerator. And here she is. It's only been on the smoker for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes at this point. So we'll come take a look again a little bit later when it's further along. All right, let's get back inside and get our bread going for our rolls because that will need to rise. And um, while that's rising, we can do the lemon bars.
wanted to get the oven preheating because we do need to bake the base of the lemon bars um, before we can pour the topping on it. So I want to make sure that that's ready to go. And our um, eggs just finished with their pressure cook. So we're going to set a timer for five minutes and I need to get a bowl with ice water ready really quick. Right, we are going to get our water and yeast going here. And we can let that start getting bubbly. Uh, while we wait the last little bit for our eggs to be done. And we're going to add, oh, teaspoons, some sugar. Pay no mind to the squealing puppies. They are playing. Nobody's getting hurt. And that's a little bit of salt. Actually, I probably shouldn't have put that in there, but it's okay. Usually you want to give your uh, yeast a chance to start working before you add salt, but because salt does inhibit yeast growth. So if these don't rise, we'll know why. <laughs> Just gonna plop them in here. And actually, you can leave them in the ice water for longer than five minutes. That's just, I think, as long as they, you need to, to stop the cooking process. And uh, one of them did whoop, crack, so uh, that's why I definitely want to wash them before I put them in here because that does happen. All right, I'm going to just set these guys to the side and we will make our deviled eggs a little bit later. So the recipe that I'm using is from King Arthur Flour. Uh, I've used it before and it's turned out great. Uh, and the reason I picked it originally though is there's a ton of great reviews and a lot of people who have had Cubanos from Miami who said it's very, which I have never had a Cubano from Miami, um, and they say that it's very authentic. So that's why we like it. Um, so they do give weights, of course, because it's King Arthur flour. So we need 480 grams of flour. And then we need four tablespoons or 57 grams of butter, or you can use lard, you use a little bit less. I'm pretty sure this is only like three tablespoons. What did I say? 57. And um, you're supposed to have them cut into small pieces. Perfect. And that's it. That's all that goes in this. And we're just going to put it on the mixer and get it mixed up and kneaded. This is looking lovely. I'm just going to grab some olive oil real quick. Just drizzle some oil in the bottom of this so it doesn't form a skin. Just roll it around in that. Just 
going to cover this with some saran wrap or a towel, whatever you fancy, and uh, set it aside to raise for an hour. It does say it doesn't necessarily have to um, double in size. And then it actually has you also in, uh, after that hour, um, fold the dough in on itself and turn it upside down after 30, oh sorry, after 30 minutes. Take the dough, fold it in and on itself, turn it upside down to redistribute yeast, which I've never heard of doing that before. I don't remember that of this particular recipe. That's what it says. So uh, yeah, so we are going to set a timer for 30 minutes. Look at these two little cutie pies right there. <laughs> They've been playing. Now they're going to have a little nappy. Hi, guys. I just realized that I never finished my coffee, and it's been sitting in the microwave, now cold. So I'm heating it up so I can finish it. While we get started on our lemon bars. All right, crust first. Um, actually, let me clean up a little bit of this mess, and then we will start on the lemon bars. I completely forgot that I need my mixing bowl for the lemon bars, too. So, gave that a quick wash, and now we can start on the crust. I totally did not take my butter out of the refrigerator to have it softened, so I just put it in the microwave and melted it too much, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's uh, for this, I don't know. I don't feel like it really matters if it's a little melty. And this recipe is our absolute favorite lemon bar recipe. It's from Ina Garten, and uh, it's just sublime. It, ha it has the perfect ratio of the lemon filling to the shortbread crust. Mm, so good. So we just need two cups of flour. And a half cup of sugar. And just a bit of salt. This is just going to cream together until it's you know, basically mixed together, and then we will flatten it out into our pan. So this is actually where having just room temperature butter and not melty would make this a little easier. So basically, you just need to press this kind of evenly across the bottom of the pan. She does say to um, have it go up the sides, but I don't, I don't know. We don't really like it that way because then the corners, they just seem like the ratio isn't a good ratio of filling to um, crust. All right, so we are just going to put this in the oven to bake for 15 to 20 minutes until it's just very lightly browned. And while that is happening, we will get ready to make the filling which we will also just make right in this bowl. And I'm not even gonna clean it out. I will admit, Ina does say that you should chill that um, crust before you put it in the oven, but I never have, and it's always come out perfectly. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Well, completely missed turning on the record button there for a minute, so 
Um, basically, I have just zested, uh, let's see, let's one, two, three, four, five, six lemons and um, just put it in the bowl that we'll be mixing. And then we are now juicing our lemons for the cup of lemon juice that we need. And one of the things I was saying is these lemons, some of them definitely, you know, have been showing their age. These lemons are actually from before the holidays, if you can believe it. So early December when we did um, our family outing up in Canada uh, with David's family, I got a big bag of lemons from Costco and they've just been sitting in my fridge and they're actually, most of them are still in really good shape. So it's kind of amazing. So the recipe calls for six lemons, um, but, oh shoot, I did want to zest these ones. All right, let's actually use these since I've already zested them. Anyway, the recipe calls for six lemons, but large ones, and most of these are pretty small, so I'm sure I'm going to need more than that. I do think I'm going to zest them all and juice them all. Actually, I might need the juice from them all, uh, but just because they are uh, so old. Just get them used up, and I'll just freeze the zest and the juice. <laughs> it's been a while since I've made lemon bars, and I forgot that I usually put lemon zest in with the crust too, but that's all right. It doesn't actually call for it. Just a teeny tiny bit more. Like I said, I do want to go ahead and zest all of these that I didn't zest. Well, the ones that still have good looking zest, not all of them did. We're not going to zest that one. It's not looking super hot. All right. Like I said, I'll just freeze this as well as the lemon juice that we get out of them. I have all of the juice done now, and I am actually going to put these into ice cube trays and freeze them so that when I just need a little bit of lemon juice. I don't have to like unthaw or unthaw. That's not really a word. Uh, I don't have to thaw the entire thing of it. So I'm just going to put the lemon zest in one as well. And then I was watching Becky over at Acre Homestead. Love her channel. And she just did a big citrus preservation day, like she did a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, and this is one of the things that she did was uh, to freeze the lemon juice in uh, silicone trays. Um, but then as I was reading through some of the comments that people had made on hers, somebody had mentioned that she should put all of the peels that were left over into a big thing of vinegar and let them soak for, I don't know, a month or something like that. And then you can make cleaner out of it. And I think that's a fantastic idea and I'm going to try it. So I'm gonna put this into the freezer. All right, let's go bring this guy back over to the mixer and get our filling mixed up. Alrighty, this 
guy on here. I did just take our crust out of the oven and it is looking lovely. So basically just whisk everything else together and pour it over the crust. So that's our cup of lemon juice and then we need uh, three cups of sugar. I'm going to need to fill up my sugar. And we need a cup of flour. So I have found if I have all of the liquid in here when I mix it, um, the flour kind of gets lumpy, so I like to, I'm going to mix it first with the, just the lemon juice and the sugar. However, we are going to strain it, so. It will get out any of the excess lumps and stuff, because uh, it will also take out the lemon zest. Because I've found if you leave it in, it kind of gives a, a bit of a, what am I trying to say here? Bitter flavor. All right, so one of the things about Ina Garden that drives me crazy is that she always uses extra large eggs. And her recipes always call for extra large eggs. I'm not sure why, they just always do. So she calls for six extra large eggs. So I looked it up and uh, four extra large eggs make a cup. Oh, you know what? I better just look that up again one more time. Yes, four eggs makes one cup. And we need six, uh, six, which will be a cup and a half, right? Yes. So we are just going to crack eggs not into that until we get to a cup and a half. Because not only do I not have extra large eggs, but some of my eggs are more like medium size. Oh, perfect. How many was that? I did not count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eggs. All right. These shells will go to the girls. I hope that made sense, what I just said with the eggs. Lemon bars really are quite easy. I mean, they're a little work intensive because you have to zest and juice the lemons, but uh, other than that, they're super easy. And it kind of seems like you made a fancy dessert, even though it didn't really take much effort. All right, our crust is here, and now I need my strainer again.
Oh my gosh, you guys. I, I usually also um, put the sugar and the lemon zest together and mix that really well together so it gets, the sugar gets all of the lemon oils mixed into it and then add the other stuff. But yeah, it's been a while since I did this. And those, that's also not something that is put in the recipe, so. Oh well. Long before I started doing either of those two things with the crust or the sugar, I made them exactly as the recipe said and we still loved them. I just think those two things make them better. All right. Into the oven, these go for 30 to 35 minutes. Easy. Very carefully. All right, I'm going to get some dishes washed and yeah, oh, and get our lemon peels into some vinegar. And then we have about 20 minutes left for our bread before we can shape that. And I'm gonna get our eggs into the refrigerator. And I think that is going to be it until, well, until we shape the dough. So I will bring you back when we are ready to do that. Our dough is ready to go. So, I need to deplate it. And then we are going to weigh, see how much we have. So we can split it equally in six parts. All right, so we want 141 grams each. That one's going to be way too big. <laughs> Close enough. All right, and then we just need to shape them into an oblong here. with tapered ends. Alexa, stop. So that timer was for our lemon bars. Let's go check them out. Actually checking these a little bit early, just in case, which I do have, but no, it is still very liquidy. So I had it set for 25 minutes, so we will do, I'm just gonna do another five and then uh, check it again, because I feel like they'll get overcooked really fast. All right, I think this looks good. So we will just plop them on here. And do the same thing with the rest of them. We are just going to cover these guys with some saran wrap now. And they need to rise for another hour. Okay. 
The last thing that I wanted to do was uh, make a quick coleslaw uh, to go with our sandwiches. Sadly, I went out to get carrots, my carrots from the garden last year, and I discovered that a whole bunch of them have started to get rotten. So I have what is left of them here in the sink, and I'm just gonna get them washed up and um, put back in the fridge with uh, fresh paper towels and save what I can. The problem with doing multiple things at one time is that you forget to set timers. Thankfully, this is still just a little jiggly in the center, which is exactly what we want. So we are just going to let it set here now and cool down. And then it will go into the fridge. I do need to heat my oven a little bit higher for the rolls, however. All right, I have all of my carrots all washed up here. And a few of them I need to cut off some bad spots, but for the most part, I saved quite a few of them. That one. And I am just going to actually, I'm going to let them dry on here for a bit before I put them in a bag. Let's move them over to the other counter. For our coleslaw, I'm just going to make a really simple dressing. bit of mayo and apple cider vinegar. We like ours more vinegary than creamy. So a good amount of that. And I just love having the flavor of a tiny bit of sesame oil in our coleslaw. Just gonna do some seasoning salt. Black pepper. And uh, a little bit of sugar. Maybe half a teaspoon of sugar. Just gonna give that a taste. Hmm, perfect. All right, and then we're just going to slice up some of these carrots. Well, we're going to shred carrots. Let's use these guys. Have bad spots in them. Um, and then some of these small guys, although I think this is plenty. <clears throat> Weirdly, this cabbage is going bad from the inside out, which I've never had happen before. So we are going to have to do a little makeshift here. All right, well, we are just going to finely chop what we can here. I 
think this will be plenty. And a little bit of fresh cilantro, which I'm going to give a quick wash to. And I have a few poor little spindly scallions I can grab here. And you know what? I'm just going to use my scissors. All right, and then we just will give this a quick toss and let it sit in the fridge for the rest of the day until dinner. And it's flavors all merry and meld. Right, so that is everything except for our rolls, which will go into the oven here shortly. And I, you'll get to see them when we are putting together the sandwiches, but I did wanna go take another quick glance at our pork butt and see how it is doing. All right, what are we looking like under here? Oh beautiful and it smells so good. Mm. Cannot wait. All right, I'm going to eat some lunch and then I have a whole bunch of projects outside that we are going to get to. Not, not in this film. That will be in a film, <laughs> in a different video. Um, but I do want to get started on them. But I'm going to grab some lunch and then I will come back with you guys when we are putting together our Cubanos and our final dinner. So see you soon. All right, guys, it actually has been a couple of days since we made this dinner um, and mom came over. And since mom came over, I did not film the putting together of the sandwiches and all of that. So I thought I would do that for you now because they are delicious and I want to show you the finished product. And David and I need lunch. So that is what we are going to do. So the bread turned out fantastic, beautiful, it's perfect and it crisps up perfectly in the oven. So I do not know what a classic Cubano is. This is just how I have been served it in the past and how we really like them. So if you have um, like a traditional Cubano things, please let me know. In fact, I know I'm pretty sure that you don't use pulled pork, you use sliced pork, but we have pulled pork, which also turned out amazing. So just a good amount of yellow mustard. And then I like to, as we all know, do lots of cheese. So we are going to use Swiss cheese. And I like to put a layer on the bottom and then a layer on the top. And then some of our pulled pork, which I actually did heat this up so it's a little warm. I do not want to put fatty bits on here, however. 
That way it'll just warm through a little bit quicker when it goes in the oven. Oh, good bits. Let's <laughs> put a little bit more on this guy here. No. And then top it with some sliced deli ham. You can make these as thick as you want. Or as thin, <laughs> like in the case of mine. All right, these have been in for about 20 minutes now. So we are going to bring them out. And they are nice and sizzly, I can hear them, so I should be good to go. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I have the oven on at 450, so quite warm. Et voila. Got a little squished sideways. Ooh, hot. But you can hear they are nice and crispy now. Isn't that a thing of beauty? Yum. And here we are. This was the full dinner that we had. Coleslaw, our eggs, which actually this time I made with, instead of just sweet and dill relish like I normally do, I made it with some of my pickled peppers. Oh my goodness, they are so good, so good. And then, of course, the sandwich. And the lemon bars also turned out amazing. Mm. But I'm going to dive into this sandwich right now. Mm. So good. So good. Mm. And our lemon bar, bring it up a little closer. So it's a really great mixture of the shortbread and lots and lots of the lemon curd topping. Mm. They're very sweet. I mean, not in a sickly sweet way, but they have a lot of sugar in them, so I literally can only eat a couple bites of one. <laughs> but it's really hard to stop <laughs> just a couple bites. Well, I am going to go enjoy some lunch now. Thank you so much for coming along as we made a fun meal or two. <laughs> so uh, I hope you had a great time, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Mm-hmm.